within the metropolis, within human society, within the Mecca, New York City, there are three symbolic organs that keep the metropolis, the system of human life, alive. The brain, the heart, the hands. There are the hands whose blood is poured over the buildings to construct them. The Chrysler building bends within our minds. Laws and order can be broken. Buildings can melt. Nothing has limits. And reality often becomes distorted. The hands are the workers. The blue collar lower class. Those who die every day. Whose story is survived only by the few who love them. They are used as gears to keep the city moving. The countless lives devoted to building the city. They slave nine to five, working long hours at minimum wage. They vanish among the masses. They are left underneath the city, crushed by the gears that keeps the city moving. They sacrifice their time like spiders. The workers are building the web of poles, everything together. They work, they love the families. They watch as major brand icons like Disney's Mickey Mouse smiles and tells everyone else to smile as well. Another icon that keeps the hands working is Christ, whose martyrdom and sacrifice is a symbol for what the people are forced to do every day, sacrifice oneself for the greater good. The people are like fish. They swim underneath water. Unable to rise, they see the sun. Their hands reach for something higher. Most continue to die in the name of Christ. The figure in the front of the others holds his hands outstretched like Christ. And as he dies, he believes he is like Christ, serving others. And there's the brain. The brain tells the workers what to do. The flat iron building, the hearse building, scrape the sky, homes the brains, money keeps the brain thinking. The city is made for money. The businessmen entwine with money, making their decisions, sometimes for the greater good, sometimes for more money, sometimes to not become those who use their hands. The dollar goes up into his legs. The dollar is a one, because remember, all energy within the universe is one. Money holds on to the decorated military figure like a squid tentacle grasping him, telling him what to do. The general's face is demonic. His appearance and essence take on that of a devil. He uses weapons so the brain can keep on thinking, to keep the system running. The businessman is half smiling, half frowning. He is the brains of the operation, but he is never fully satisfied. His greed often prevents him to fully be content or happy with his power. His thoughts are centered around what the people, the hands, want. Information found in countless cell phones, which are used to monitor the masses. The laptop transmits signals to the brain, which depicts an atomic bomb exploding on screen. We are often desensitized to such catastrophes. We are distanced by a computer screen. The laptop connected to a tank, blasting artillery into the abyss above the American flag, which acts as a symbol to mask this great system. Behind it, eyes that belonging to no one truly witness every day's catastrophes. A figure is blinded, with flowers stuffed into his mouth. He's another civilian, blind, dumb to the violence. The system is all connected, like roots and veins. The artist's name appears. He tries to distinguish himself from the masses. He is within the clutter. Our identities create the richness within the cosmos. The last, but most important organ is the heart, providing emotions, feelings, purpose, bearing all the pain. The kiss is the center, dominates all other priorities. Love gives us happiness. When two lovers kiss, time stops. It is the only thing that matters. The connection between humans is the most powerful connection there is. The woman's body is distorted. The memories we share and hold within this life are merely conceptions of the mind, twisted, distorted, and 
as time passes, we become older. It's all a dream, really. And we will return to Stardust. Ares will tell the story first. The heart is connected to the tree and the roots. It is nature which connects to the woman. Like a tree, she allows new life to make roots in the world. Sacred geometry takes on different forms. We are the flower of life, from which all life derives. There is sacred geometry in all systems. Christ's heartbeat still pulses. Christ's love seeps through the system. Our lives each are contained within bubbles, overlapping on top of one another. We are all connected, forming another piece of the puzzle. All the pain, the love, the thoughts, the gears running the system, the hands, the brains, the hearts, nature, it is all part of our life. We are all part of the cosmos. It's all connected. It is all one.